Good evening to you. Good to see you tonight. Welcome to Bible study and looking forward to just a wonderful time tonight in the house of the Lord. And uh, folks are coming in. How many came straight from work? You came straight from work. All right. How many of you were able to go home and rest a minute and be here? A couple of you. How many drove like an unsaved person to get here tonight? I, I see all those hands right there. And uh, that's just Wednesday night, man. That's just the way it goes. And uh, we're delighted to see you. Thank you for desiring to be in Bible study. Thank you for putting forth the effort to be in Bible study. And I, I greatly appreciate that. And I know that God has a wonderful blessing for us tonight. I hope and pray that you received a prayer sheet on the way in. If not, AJ and Christy are at the back door. They have them. If you lift your hand, they'll bring you one. If you need one, just lift it up high so they can see you from the back there. And these documents are precious for us. Uh, welcome to those of you watching online tonight. And maybe you're driving and um, some of you are even on your way here. And you just go ahead and got us online as we go over the prayer requests and praises. Uh, if you're interested in receiving the prayer sheet via email, you can reach out to us for that. And, uh, and we'll be able to send that to you. Many of you get that often or every week, and so I hope and pray that you are able to follow along. Let's begin on the front. We always do on the upcoming events section here, and really and truthfully, our focus uh, is not too far ahead as far as Sunday services go. Of course, you know this coming Sunday is Palm Sunday, and then the following Sunday is Easter Sunday, and these are two massive and wonderful Sundays for us. Uh, already have Palm Sunday morning message completed, finishing up Palm Sunday evening and the communion meditation, and then, of course, leaning toward Easter Sunday. Services are as normal on, on this coming Sunday in the morning, 8.30, Sunday school at 10, service at 11, and then we'll be back at 6 o'clock for communion. If you are in town, you should, you should uh, schedule to come to communion Sunday night, this will be a one-hour service. It will be daylight, so those of you that have difficulty uh, driving at night, you'll be able to come and get home in plenty of time. I promise you, you will be blessed and encouraged. You will leave here thankful and focused on the love of God through the uh, sacrifice of his son and just reminded of that great payment for your sin, for my sin, and understanding also the celebration that uh, he rose from the dead on Easter Sunday morning. On Easter Sunday, the services are at 9 and 11. And, of course, we have all of our children's ministries during those times, uh, junior church during those times. They've got a big contest going on in junior church. Um, Tommy has got prize for the, the young people that in first through fifth grade that bring the most visitors. And uh, he tells me all the time, one kid says, I've got three coming. Another kid says, i got five coming. We'll see how that all works out. But he did finally tell me the prize. Last time I opened up my big mouth and spoiled it. So he swore me to secrecy. I cannot tell you. But uh, it, it's a good prize. I was kinda, that was kind of thoughtful what they did there. So they'll have uh, one for the 9 o'clock service and one for the 11 o'clock service. No, the answer is no, no. No, if your kid brings six visitors to 9 o'clock, they can't stay for 11 o'clock and win both prizes, okay? Uh, I just understand how the human mind works that day. Choir's got marvelous music this week. Next week, we've got specials. Um, part of the special on Easter Sunday will include our, our um, sign language, uh, uh, voices of praise there. And so we look forward to that. Um, a week from tonight, there's no Bible study. Next Wednesday night, there's no midweek service. Spring break, and many of our folks are out and traveling. And so we'll take a break as well, and then we'll come back there in the month of April. I see that tonight in the lobby, there is a Vacation Bible School volunteer sign-up is beginning. There's a table there for you to sign up if you want to help in Vacation Bible School. And we'll say a lot more about that as we move forward toward, toward that time. And then you look at that schedule, and all, all throughout there's events in April. And especially, ladies, note on the 18th, uh, Erica Fuller, who is now Erica Hernandez, been Erica Hernandez for a little while, and her and her husband are going to have a baby. I'm so excited for them. They're having a baby shower 
on Saturday, April 18th. And I sure do want you to participate in that. I'm speaking from experience from my own kids as far as wedding showers. It's wonderful to see the young people get their lives set up and the help from Plantation Baptist Church. Open up your prayer sheet and you have two wonderful missionary letters. Start with the Brown family if we would, Brother Randy. Um, this is Kevin and Michelle Brown. Kevin retired from the United States Army and served our nation for many years. His lovely wife, Michelle, and I think they have five children. Uh, many of them are in the ministry today. Today, Kevin is the executive director of a mission board called Armed Forces Baptist Missions. This, uh, I, I sit on the board of this missions group, by the way, and their primary objective is as the Lord opens doors, they plant churches in what they call servicemen centers um, all around the world right near Air Force base or military bases, whatever bases they are, so that the men and the women that are in the military have a church to go to while they're stationed abroad. They have a place where they can go on Friday nights and have fellowship and Bible study. And uh, they've got missionaries all over the world that are connected with Armed Forces Baptist Missions. Wrote a tremendous letter here. Um, and I'll just hit some of the highlights. In the first paragraph, one of the missionaries passed away, Brother Les Dillons. And uh, he had many faithful years of service. Pick up right in the middle of that paragraph where it says, those years of service included an essential AFBM ministry he helped begin near McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey. God used Les and Audrey in such a special way. Over the decades, the servicemen center there has impacted thousands of military men and women. Today, another um, missionary, care. you have somebody in the military, oh, uh, family or whatever, maybe you're, maybe you're interested in the military, maybe you're retired military. Bible college visits is what they're doing now. They're an important part of the ministry. They've been to Crown College there in Knoxville, Tennessee, um, and they say with view, we view each visit as a God-ordained opportunity to share about the needs on the mission field and to help ministry-minded young adults as they seek God's perfect will for them. And so continue to pray for Armed Forces Baptist Missions. Their headquarters is in Chesapeake, Virginia. It's out of a local church there called Good News Baptist Church and a wonderful, wonderful ministry. Flip the page to the Boone family. My brother-in-law preached after Madison got married, and he referenced this family. They're with his missionary board, ABWE. Um, and you see Aaron and Stephanie Boone there and the gang and the family. We have supported the Boones for, for almost 13 years probably. Matter of fact, the first paragraph says we're sending this newsletter out exactly 12 years after we first moved to Tanzania. And we started supporting them when they are in deputation before they ever went to Tanzania. Um, they're offering their, their thanks and gratitude for faithful churches like ours. Uh, in paragraph two, they're completely humbled and grateful for the support. The last sentence there in that says, literally keeping us here on the field. This is the family that started that sewing uh, school for ladies to help give the ladies income and to protect the ladies and get the ladies of that area to, the go to know the gospel. Come, if you would, down to fourth paragraph. It says, New Year, New Students. Another 20 students have entered our program, and uh, this time they actually had to delay their program by two months due to low funds. It was difficult. Come down about three or four more sentences. It talks about sales at the shop where they're selling their goods that helped them get started in the 2024 year. Uh, they learned through this difficult time. We have learned to never fear but to just turn to the Lord in prayer. Man, if you get nothing else tonight, take that statement home. We learn to never fear, but to just turn to him in prayer. It was a difficult time. Come in 2023, the last paragraph, they give a little report. In 2023, 12 of the 20 students came to know Jesus as their Savior. Praise the Lord. He says, our biggest prayers for our students about all the life-changing training acquired is for the salvation of their souls. Please pray for our 2024 students. As usual, we have many Muslim students who are hearing the gospel for the first time. Also, please pray for a Chinese professor, I love this, who reminds us weekly that she is an atheist, yet has faithfully attended our services for three months. I can't wait till they write back and tell us about how she gets saved. Uh, the last line 
is, is impactful. She learned about us from an event we hosted for international students. You never know how God just uses opportunities. And so great family, um, why, wonderful letters. It's, it's an honor to support both of these missionaries from Plantation Baptist Church. All right, open up, take your ink pen, come down through the phoned-in prayer request. You see it goes from the top to the bottom. And if you look at my sheet on the back, I have all these prayer requests to give you to write down. And so folks have been calling in, and they're counting on us to take these requests to the throne of grace, and they're counting on us to give God praise for the good hand of God. Uh, Bill and Colleen Shepard, seated right there uh, in the, uh, near the back, are asking prayer for Justin Dubois. Du Bois. He's back in the hospital, has pneumonia. He also has a spinal fluid and blood draining from his ears and his nose. And so we're praying for this young man. Um, is he a believer, Colleen? Does he, he knows the Lord, so he is a believer. And so continue to pray for Justin. How old would Justin be? 35, 35, and to suffer like this. We need to continue to pray for him. Elaine Nance is asking continued prayer for Laura Cozio, who's having more medical tests done. Laura got saved here at our church and just a marvelous lady, but she is struggling in her health. You see Randy's name here, Randy Williams, but really and truthfully, it's the whole Williams family, his dad, Bentley, and his mom, Carolyn. Carolyn's sister, Inez, uh, passed away. She was a little bit older than Carolyn, quite a bit older than Carolyn, but she passed, and uh, they have the funeral service tomorrow, and so they're asking prayer for comfort. It was a tough day for Carolyn. The same day that her sister passed, she went to work as a home care nurse, and many of you home care nurses understand this. You build a relationship with your the person you're caring for, and that lady died the same day as her sister and so I talked with Carolyn yesterday. She's strong in the Lord, but you can just feel the, the burden of all that she's going through. And so please lift Bentley, Carolyn, Randy, and Joni. And then if you would, write down beside that Bentley and Carolyn's son, Omar. Omar's been dealing with some health issues lately. And so they're kind of going through it. They need the lifting of God's people. And then right on the heels of that, uh, Joni is giving praise that her niece, Tabby, who we've met and is married, had a baby girl yesterday. And so for those of you that don't know Tabby's story, Joni, are you in here? Randy, are you in here? Where, there, there, Randy, the, her, Tabby's dad was a what? Atheist. And he was reading the Bible to, to prove that there was no God. And he left that Bible out, and his daughter read it, and she came to the true and living God. And she got saved. It was fantastic. Then she got baptized. Randy and Joni went to uh, Washington, D.C. for the baptism. And then she met a godly man and got married. They've been here and given their testimony. And now they've had a little baby girl. And I just tell you, God is great, isn't he? And you have an atheist reading the Bible to prove there is no God. His daughter sneaks in and reads it, that same Bible and comes to God. Uh, you're not going to outsmart the Lord. He's just omnipotent God. Susan Fernandez is asking prayer for her friend Carmen Morales, his teenage daughter. Pray for her salvation. Uh, also, Susan is asking for special prayer for her grandson, Jonathan. Now, we love Jonathan, but there's a, an unspoken in Jonathan's life. Would you write beside Susan's request, Nelson wants us to pray for a man that he knows at work. His name is Jason Kolb, K-O-L-B. He was working underneath his car, jacked up, and the car fell on him. And the car broke his neck, broke his, broke his midsection, and broke some other things. He's a terrible injury. And so um, Nelson is asking prayer for this man, Jason. Uh, Suzanne Joint, this is a tough one. And Brian and Suzanne, are they here tonight? They probably are not. They're, they're in Awana. Suzanne Joint's niece, Sydney. Sydney delivered a baby girl the other day. The delivery took way too long, in which turn caused Sydney to get a bacterial infection and possibly MRSA. The baby was oxygen deprived. They're worried about brain damage. The baby's going to have an MRI tomorrow and tell what is going on with her brain. And they're praying for peace and for wisdom. It was just um, 
a difficult moment here. And um, we need wisdom from the Lord, and so this family will undergo that. Of course, Brian and Suzanne are great witnesses and lights for the gospel and to their family, and uh, they're counting on us to pray. young man named Howie, 16 years old, tied to a, a lady that's new to our church, is undergoing some medical testing up in uh, New York University. And so pray for this young man, Howie. They need a, a diagnosis for him. Brittany Nelson is asking prayer for that she can get uh, chosen to work the Formula One race this year. She would like to do that. And you know Brittany, and you know Brittany's desires with the Lord, and she's, she's just faithful enough to ask the Lord to give her the desire of her heart. And she wants us to pray. Our missionary, Connie Ziner, is going to have a breast cancer surgery on March 25th. And um, she's going to have a, 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 a major surgery there and pray as they navigate her treatments going forward and her recovery. My mom, thank you for praying for my mom. My mom is recovering well. Uh, she's probably watching online. She was watching online on Sunday. Uh, she just needs her eye, her peripheral vision is um, not what it should be. And she's weak. So just continue to pray for her. She sends her love, by the way. And uh, her thankfulness for your prayers. Uh, Carol, Carol Adipetro's mom, Nancy Northrup, fell last week and hurt her knee and broke her rib when she fell. We're praying for her mental health as well. We love Nancy. She's having a, a, just a tough time right now. Pray for Carol, too, as she's a, uh, a caregiver for her mom. Keith Scheffler, uh, talk with joy. And just before the service through text, his liver is functioning well. They're still waiting on the kidneys. Pray earnestly for that to happen. Continue to pray for joy. Um, they're going to remove the feeding tube now. He's got to eat. He's got to eat on his own. So we need him to eat, and we need his kidneys to go. And uh, they say because of the toxins that is in his body, it's affecting his mind a little bit. It's just going to take some time. It's just going to take some time, but we need the great physician to help him. Ursula Lilas is asking prayer for her friend Daniela, seven and a half months pregnant with her baby Avery Rose. They're asking prayer for little Avery. The doctors are saying has a low survival rate. Her kidneys are not functioning properly, and she has heart issues. They're praying she'll be able to be born and for God to do a miracle. If you believe God can do a miracle, would you say amen? All right, so we're asking God to do this miracle. And uh, I heard a strong amen from the Meneos over there because they've seen God do in Olivia's life a wonderful miracle. Also, Ursula's friend and financial advisor, Isabella, is 51 years old, and she's in hospice care. So Ursula is really standing in the gap for people, and she needs us to help. Brenda Macias has an unspoken request uh, tonight. Others do, and we'll touch on that in a moment. Uh, Joey came in right before church and said, Jackie Leggett is declining rapidly. We know this from Barbara and from Carolyn. How many know Jackie Leggett? You know, Jackie, she's probably going to go to heaven pretty soon. Uh, we're going to go tomorrow and visit her and have prayer with the family. Pray for Jackie Leggett. Her husband's already there waiting on her, and she knows she's going because of the Lord. Francine Whitman has an unspoken request tonight and for wisdom and for guidance. Uh, we're continuing to keep both Bill Sr. and Ann Neely in our prayers as they're distant from us but not from our heart. All right, take your ink pen if you would and let's write some ones down here. Uh, I think I've got about eight of them to add and we'll have our prayer. Um, Adela, precious lady in our church, teaches in our school, her kids. Adela's dad, his name is Jacob. And I think he lives in Chicago. Jacob had a stroke, and he is, he's just not, he's not recovering well at all. It seems like every other day there's a different problem with bleeding and other things. And she's asking prayer for her dad tonight. His name is Jacob, and he, he had a stroke. Troy Weekly, we're in prayer for Troy. Justin and Linda Lee are here tonight. I uh, understand that he's been moved to rehab, and I talk with Miss Linda, and sh they feel the prayers of God's people, and we're asking the great physician to bring Troy um, to a wonderful position of health. I'm also asking God to use this spiritually in his heart and to just kind of get him to think about the Lord and where he is with the Lord and all of those things. Cologne, is Will here tonight? Will, how's your brother? Okay, Fernando had a, had a stroke in Georgia, and his life hung in the balance. 
but he is doing better. They're still worried about the left carotid artery. Okay. Okay. All right. Were you just with him? Two days ago. Right. Okay. Pray for Fernando. And Fernando is a believer? Yes. Wonderful. All right. We have kids on a college trip. Uh, Simeon and Patricia Dunstan have 10 seniors up at Pensacola Christian College. They'll be traveling back Friday. I understand Friday and Saturday we're supposed to have terrible weather. So please pray for traveling mercies there. Brother Bill Neely. Uh, Haiti. We're watching on, on the news and we're seeing that. You sent out the email of all the people standing there. You were able to feed 600 families. You have 2,400 families in that community that need to be fed. And they were, I saw the picture. They're literally standing at your gate begging, pleading, hoping, praying. You said it's $20 a family when I did the math on that. And that buys food for how long? And so the, the men and women that work for Mission to Haiti have access to purchase that food, prepare that food, and disperse that food at, at $20 a family. So 20 times 2,400 was $50,000 is what you were, and you put that email out all over the place, right? And, of course, through the churches and the, and, the, and the Christians down there, the gospel's going out with this as well. Yeah. And you just had the, uh, the, the campaign there where you saw hundreds of people come to salvation. Yeah, and I think this is a marvelous time for Mission to Haiti, too. I mean, the world's probably looking for opportunity to help, and we're already down there. Right. Well, okay. Well, we want to help. And so it's $20 a family. They can feed food for a week. If you want to give somehow, I'll say it again on Sunday. We'll put it out through our, our – I, I sent emails to three pastors right before I came in. And the good news is I'm related to all three of those pastors, so they better do something. <laughs> I'll be calling them to make sure that they do something. And uh, you can do that through the church, or they can go on Mission to Haiti website and do it that way. Uh, I, Either way is fine. Okay. All right. Um, Cassie Kinder is asking for prayer that she needs a home. She needs to get, she's right now living with her sister and with Jeffrey, and it's just a lot of people under one roof, and she needs her own home. And so she's a new believer, and the only thing she knows to do is pray and ask the Lord, God, give her a job. So we need to join her there. And Donna Barber has called in with a, in a very, very important and needed unspoken request. I wonder if you have an unspoken request. You just want the Lord to see your hand, knows the needs of your heart, and uh, we'll ask the Lord to meet that. All right, before I pray, how many have just your hearts full tonight? You have a praise. God did something great in your life, answered prayer, and you want to give him glory for that. Yes, Mary Phillips does. God gave you a car. Gave you a car. If God can give a car, God can give a lot of things, can he? He gave you a great car, right? I saw that car before they gave it to you, and I know where every dent and every scratch is. So if there's new dents and scratches, I know where those are too. Like you got it. All right. All right. Yeah. Of 
Courtney who? Courtney, he's in Cleveland Clinic? From Bunny Buckner, and his kidneys are failing. Is that, is that Cleveland Clinic up there probably or down here? Up there? Okay. All right. By the way, if you have an emergency prayer request that comes in later, if you usually get it to Joey, it'll get to me uh, here and so we can communicate. I'm excited tonight to have our preacher preach to us. Our preacher tonight is um, Brother Michael Todd and his wife Sandy is with us. And they are important to us because of his mother, Mrs. Linda Todd. And Mike and Sandy have been missionaries in Argentina for, well, you've been there your whole life. How many years? 34 years you've been missionaries down there. How many years have you all been married? 36 years. Fantastic. And uh, I told him last time he was in town, I said, listen, next time you're in town, I want you to preach our Wednesday night Bible study. They're, they're doing a wonderful work down in Argentina. They do a lot of camp ministry down there, reaching and touching lives. And uh, they're in to see mom. And so... I got hold of them and said, you've got Wednesday night Bible study. And when I'm done praying, they got a, a three-minute video. Uh, I guess we'll sing a song before that. We can stand and sing our song. Then they've got a three-minute video, and then Brother Mike's going to come and preach to us. And I told him to feed our souls tonight, and I know that he'll do a great job with that. All right, let's have our prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you. We thank you, God, for answered prayer. We thank you for the way you're moving. Thank you, Lord. For the fact that we can trust you and your, whatever need we have, you're the supply of that need. And you never forsake us. You never, you never leave us. Um, we're never separated from your love. Once we've been saved, we can never be lost. We're secured for all eternity. And no matter where we go, you go. And what we go through, you go through with us. And and you're there to hear our cry. You're there when we're in trouble. You're there when we're inflicted. You're there when in the good times. You're there in the difficult times. You're just ever faithful, unchanging God. Thank you for, for hearing and answering prayer. Lord, you've heard all the petitions tonight. You hear the depth of the need ranging everywhere from the eternal salvation of the soul to the touch of the physical body, mind, from wisdom and guidance for from homes that need to be provided and just all kinds of things. Lord, some are at death's door. Some are, are uh, in, in immediate, urgent need tonight. Kidneys are failing. And I think about Keith needing to be able to eat. And, Lord, you just, you're God. And so where we get overwhelmed and we can get turned around and we can get flustered, you never change. And so thank you. Thank you for sparing Fernando's life and Troy's life and my mom's life and, and this guy Jason Kolb's life. And you spared all these lives, Lord. I think about the little babies that, that was born in a terrible way there uh, that for the Joints family. And God, just intervene in that way. I think about Ursula's little fr her friend and that little baby in the womb. And the doctors are saying one thing, but we're trusting the great physician. And so meet all these needs. Thank you, Lord, for Mike and for Sandy. And thank you, God, for their heart for you, their faithful service. Lord, and um, I know they love you, and I know they walk with you. And I'm excited tonight just to sit on the front row and open my Bible and hear preaching from the Word of God. Feed my soul and feed the souls of our people, Lord. We love you. And oh, how we love you. And we need you. And oh, how faithful you are. Bless us now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, stand if you would. Let's stretch your legs just a second. We've got a little song here, a uh, hymn that Brother Rod has chosen. and uh, leaning, on the leaning on the everlasting arms. And when that's done, we'll play the video, Brother Randy. Rod will seat the people. And then after the video, Brother Mike will come and preach to us. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning. 
safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. You may be seated. Argentina is located on the southern tip of South America. It's a beautiful country, wealthy in natural resources, agriculture, cattle, mining industry, oil, and tourism. It is also famous for its soccer and one of the world's highest inflations, reaching 250% last year. Argentina has a population of 46 million people, of which 60% live in the major cities. It it is a Catholic country by tradition, but has been heavily influenced by all the major religions and cults. The true gospel has been in Argentina for many years, but the need is still great. Its greatest need is still for more workers. We have a shortage of national leadership to take over the churches that have already been started. The process is slow and long-term. The reality is that we need help. We are Mike and Sandy Todd, Baptist Bible Fellowship Missionaries to Argentina. We live in the city of Junin in the province of Buenos Aires. We live and work in the city of Junin with a population of 100,000. We've helped start two works in this city. We are also the mother church for a third church plant. We are currently pastoring the Iglesia Bautista Nueva Vida, which is the New Life Baptist Church. One of our ministries is Campamento Bautista Marcos Paz. It's a youth camp and retreat ministry. Each year we host four youth camps and three retreats, ministering to children, teens, and adults. It's been one of the most fruitful ministries we've had here in Argentina. This year we celebrated our 50th anniversary. Fifty years changing lives for Christ.
There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, it's a great opportunity for me to thank you once again. I thank, thank you in the past for your generosity and your kindness towards my parents. And uh, they, you have already been a blessing to us over the years in taking care of them after they've uh, come back from their uh, years of service there in Argentina. Um, <clears throat> we just got back to the States about three, two and a half, maybe three weeks ago now. Um, and uh, we're on a short furlough. We'll be visiting some of our supporting churches. And Lord willing, we'll be headed back uh, May 1st, uh, continue working there in Argentina. So keep us in your prayers as we travel uh, uh, here in the States. Um, I'll ask that you bear with me uh, this evening as well. I don't normally preach in English, uh, so I'm a little bit out of practice. Uh, and I don't normally read my English Bible. I do everything in Spanish, so... Uh, it's a little, my English doesn't flow just yet, you know, so you just have to be a little bit patient with me uh, as we get through this. But uh, we are thrilled to be with you this evening and be able to share the Word of God with you. When the pastor uh, was communicating, we, he said, well, you don't even have to preach about missions. Just uh, challenge us from the Word of God. And when he said that, immediately my mind went to a passage that <clears throat> I've enjoyed studying and preaching over the years. It's always an encouragement to me, <clears throat> and uh, so uh, I just kept that in my that thought in my mind. And when I went to look for the my sermon notes, they were nowhere to be found. I mean, I looked on the internet uh, in my cloud, not everywhere in the internet. Uh, I looked through my files and my and my iPads and my phone. I looked everywhere I could think of it, and it was just it's just gone. So I've spent the last couple of days uh, recreating what I remember. Of, of, of this message, uh, but I want to share it with you tonight. Uh, if you would, open your Bibles to the book of Daniel chapter 3. It's one of my favorite passages in the Old Testament, my favorite stories, and it's always been an encouragement to me uh, when I read or teach it, and hopefully it will be to you tonight. I'm going to read three verses to begin with, Daniel chapter 3, beginning in verse 16. And we'll read to verse 18. It's part of the introduction. <clears throat> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not, not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image that thou hast set up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful uh, tonight to have this opportunity uh, to look into your word. Pray that you'd use me tonight to challenge and encourage in the Holy Spirit. Use these words to fill the need that someone might have here tonight. We ask these things in Jesus' name for your glory. Amen. I remember as a child threatening my older brother, you better not do it or else. You might relate to, to that, yeah, making threats similar to that at one point or another. Uh, and this usually was followed by the dreaded words, and if not, and, uh, and that made it more complicated because I had to think of some kind of hideous punishment that I was going to unfold on him, um, such as, I'm going to tell mama on you, you know, and be careful. She looks mild-mannered, but if you get her riled up, she can be vicious. But uh, uh, he had to call my bluff, you know, and we all have faced similar situations uh, in life where we've had to answer the and if not question. Now this is also true in our spiritual world and our spiritual lives. Uh, and the story today talks exactly about this question. And that's the title of my message, and if not. Uh, this might also be true in your life. The story today is, is about three men 
who faced an impossible situation uh, where they had no idea what was going on or how it was going to turn out, but yet they decided to do the right thing. They decided to follow God no matter what. And I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, with a story, but I'm going to ask you to forget the ending of the story anyway. Hmm? Let me set the stage. Uh, king Neb Nebuchadnezzar was uh, in charge of everything. He was the king of the world at that time. Uh, one of the most powerful men in the world. He was feeling pretty good about himself. So he um, made this huge statue and put it in a very visible place and decided he was going to have everybody in his kingdom worship him and that statue. So he got all his important people together, got all his governors and his uh, uh, people of influence around him, his counselors, and anybody that mattered. He got them around him and said, listen, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to have my band play some music. And as soon as you hear that music, everybody in the kingdom is going to bow down and he's going to worship my statue. So that was the setting for our story tonight. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel's friends, three Jewish boys, three Jewish men at this stage, were minding their own business. They were doing what they were supposed to be doing. They were captives in a foreign land, but they had been placed in a, in a position of authority and leadership. And so they were doing their job, doing a good job, minding their own business. But then we get to, to verse 8 of our text. It says, wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Uh, you know what? A life of faith is full of trials. It's full of trials. That's the nature of faith. You know, what good is faith if it's not tested? What good is faith if there's no room for doubt or fear or the unknown. You know, faith is there for a reason. And if we live by faith, we're going to face trials. Uh, I mean, this is not anything new. I'm not giving you anything uh, uh, that's a new revelation. I mean, we were warned, you know, in John chapter 16, it says, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So we know that this is going to happen. We know that we're going to face trials. We're going to face uh, difficult situations in our life based on our faith. And sometimes uh, because of our faith and sometimes just because of life. But we need faith to get through it. Trials come in the life of even the most dedicated Christians. Okay? Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego had made a decision when they were young, along with Daniel, said, we're not going to get contaminate ourselves with, uh, with the king's uh, food. We're just going to honor God with our lives. We're going to obey God's commandments for us, and we're, uh, we're just going to be different. We're going to stand out this way, whatever the cost. And God blessed them because of that, and, and and they were serving God in spite of being in a, in a foreign country surrounded by paganism. But trials came in their lives. Sometimes I think we're fooled uh, into believing that uh, if we do everything right, then we'll never face these kind of problems. Hmm? Uh, nobody teaches us that, uh, at least not here, I'm sure. Nobody's ever taught you that, but sometimes we just like believing that. Well, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I'm reading my Bible. I'm having my, my quiet time. I'm, I'm faithful in church. I'm serving. I'm, I, everything should go okay. And I believe that when we do things the way God commands us, our life is easier because of it. But that doesn't exempt us from facing difficulties and facing the trials of life. That's not a biblical teaching, but it's a lie Satan wants us to believe a lot of times. A lot of them are out there preaching the prosperity gospel. That, you know, if you have faith, then God is obligated to, uh, to reward you for that faith. Or the, the name it and claim it mentality, you know, where we basically turn God into a genie where he gives us what we ask for. But none of these positions are biblical. 
And sometimes we ask the existential questions, like, you know, why, why me? Why is this happening to me? Well, why not? Why not you? Or where's, where's God when this is happening to me? It's none of your business, really, where God is. But he's right in the exact same place he was when Jesus hung on the cross when he was dying for your sins. That's where God is. I mean, trials come in anybody's life. But trials are just opportunities for doing the right thing. The story continues in uh, verse 9. And we begin reading again. <clears throat> they spake and said unto the king ne Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the sackbut, which I don't know what it is, but I'll never be caught dead playing it. Psaltery and uh, dulcimer and all kinds of music shall fall down on and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of the burning fire furnace. Uh, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king... Have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship thy golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. The situation changed. They were doing a good job, doing what they were supposed to do. But somebody accused him. Of doing the right thing. <laughs> so these guys are doing the right thing. They're sticking by their principles. They're honoring their God. And they're ignoring your word. Well that was a problem. And the king was, was furious. Verse 13. Said that. Uh, he went into a rage. And he was furious. By this. How dare they defy the commandments of the most powerful king in the world at that time. The king, I imagine, knowing the reputation of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were good servants. They were found to be wiser than everybody else. We read in chapter 1. Knowing who they were... It's my guess that he decided to give them a second chance instead of just killing them outright. Because as we continue to read in verse 14, it said, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do you serve, uh, uh, do you not, excuse me, do not ye serve my God, nor worship the golden image which is uh, I have set up? Now if ye be ready that at the, at the time ye hear the sound of the cornet, my band, playing, he shall fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, if you worship not, he shall be cast that same hour into the midst of the burning fire furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Hmm. Well, he gave him a second chance. He said, listen, I know who you are, but unless you bow down and worship my image, then this is it for you. And basically what he said is, no God can save you from me. There isn't a God around that can get you out of this mess. Now that had to be an intimidating situation. When the king was basically treated and thought of as God himself what he said was law and yet here's these three men standing before the king and having to give an answer of what was going to what they were going to do this is when they faced their and if not moment this is my favorite part of the story the verses we read when we started uh, verse 16 so then Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, 
whom we serve, is able to de deliver us from the burning fire furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Uh, you know what? It's easier to obey God when the decision to obey him was made ahead of time. Hmm? Notice that in the text, they didn't have a discussion about what they were going to say. They didn't take the time to say, okay, let's have a conference. Let's discuss our options and see, should we obey? Should we not obey? Are we going to burn today? Are we just going to go with the flow? They didn't talk about it. In fact, the answer they gave the king was, we're not careful to answer thee on this matter. We're not going to even take the time to think about it or talk about it. We don't have to. We've already made our decision. We know what, we're going to, what our answer is going to be. They knew what they were going to say, so they didn't have to think about it. They had already decided that beforehand. They had already decided that they were going to honor God with their lives. They were going to obey God. Don't wait until you're in the middle of a trial to decide who your where your loyalties lie. Because usually when we're under pressure, we don't make the right decisions. So if you were going to wait and see, well, I'll wait till I, till I face that situation. I'll wait till I cross that bridge and then see if I'm going to stay faithful or if I'm going to go my own way. Because usually you'll make a wrong decision. Now, if you decide now what you're going to do, no matter what, then it'll be much easier. When the pressure's on, when the heat's on, you just say, okay, this is, I've already decided this. I know what I have to do. You don't have to think about it. You don't even have to pray about it. You just have to do it. Well, that's where they were. They knew what, and they also knew what kind of God they served. Verse 17, it said, if, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. They knew what kind of God they served. They knew what he was capable of, and they were trusting in him. It wasn't a surprise to them. They didn't have to figure it out in the moment. They knew what kind of God they served. Um, but now was their true test of faith. Up till now, they'd just been, uh, they'd been, they'd just been facing the situation. But now it's when the rubber meets the road. Hmm? Now it's when they'd already given their answer. So now they had to face the consequences. But my favorite part is verse 18. As a matter of fact, the, the first three letters or first three words of verse 18 are the most powerful words in this whole chapter that tell us exactly what the caliber of faith was of these three men. Verse 18 says, but if not. What does that say to you? But if not. I said, they, they were telling the king, listen. We don't have to think about it. We know what we're doing. We know what kind of God we serve. And we know you've threatened us to, to burn us alive the minute we, uh, we refuse to obey. We know what kind of God we serve. And we know he's powerful to save us. And we know he can get us out of your hands. But if not, in other words, we believe in the sovereignty of God's will. If it's not God's will to save us at this time, then there is still no way. That we're going to do what you want us to do. We're still going to be faithful. That's incredible. They believed that God could do it. He could choose not to save them. And that was an option. Um, they said, but if not. I mean, if God chooses today not to save us from, from this furnace. Then that's okay with us too. They were going to do the right thing no matter what. Verse 18 continues in the end, or the, the last part of it says, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship thy golden image which thou hast set up. He said, we are not going to dishonor our God. We're going to trust him. We're going to serve him until our dying breath because this is the right thing to do. This is who we believe in. This is where our faith is. You know, we're all going to face our own and if not moments more than once in our lives. 
But when we're faced with those trials, those difficulties, those challenges that come across our path, and we're going to have to call the bluff. What are you going to do if God decides not to do things the way you want him to do them? Are you going to stay faithful? Are you going to continue to trust him? Or are you going to go your own way? But you know what? When you trust God with all your heart, when you trust him, no matter what, he can do incredible things. You know, a lot of times when we think about this, this story, we think, man, what a tragedy. These guys, they were good guys doing the right thing. What a tragedy they had to be placed in that situation and face these terrible consequences. But you know what? Going through the trial is not the worst thing that can happen. Going through a trial is not the worst thing that can happen. Verse 19 now. Then was Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar full of fury... And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that uh, they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fire furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fire furnace. Therefore, because of the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fire furnace. They experienced what would be a nightmare for anybody. They experienced every second of that trial. Remember, we know the outcome of the story. That's why I ask you to forget it for just a minute. And just try to experience uh, the, the fear they've never been able to experience. Verses 24 and 25. It said, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. <laughs> they had never gone through that trial. If they had not gone through the fire, they would have never experienced the presence of God in the middle of the fire with them. They would have never known that. They would have never known the presence and the peace of God in the midst of a trial. I remember a dark time in my life. We were starting a, a church and having all kinds of obstacles but it was a very dark time spiritually for me and I'll never forget those, those days I won't I wouldn't never want to relive those days but as I look back now uh, when I thought God had just forgotten all about me God was right where he was supposed to be I just couldn't see him at that time but if I hadn't gone through that situation, I would have never known that closeness that I found with God. Even though I argued with him most of the time, I was arguing with him. He was there. You know, we could never be away from God, even when we don't see him. Because he's the one that's promised never to leave us and nor forsake us. It's in the fire where we learn what God can do. Verse 26, now of our text. Uh, yeah, verse 26. So then Nebuchadnezzar came uh, near to the mouth of the burning fire furnace and spake and said, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth 
of the midst, out of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, the captains, the kings, the counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of the fire passed on to them. That's what God can do. When you are in the middle of a trial, he can keep you safe. He can keep you safe. But you won't know just how much God can do or what God can do unless you're, you're in the trial. Unless you have to go through it. I mean, you can hear other people's stories about their trials and their difficulties, but you will never know personally what it's like for have God to work in your life unless you go through the trials. God can do incredible things when we put ourselves into his hands. So many times we're guilty of wanting to take over for God. You know, thinking we can do a better job than he can. So we try to micromanage the situation. And sometimes it takes a fire just to realize what God is capable of doing. Sometimes we can't realize it unless we're in the fire. It took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being in the fiery furnace to see the Son of God, the angel of the Lord walking there with them. Amen. It's in the fire where we find the best place to glorify God with our lives. The last part of the chapter in verse 28 now says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Here is the king of the world that's talking. Hmm? And this is what he says. Who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that thou trusted in him, that, that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word. In other words, they went against the king's will and disobeyed the king and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree, uh, a decree that every people, nation, language would speak anything amiss against the God of Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. What a tremendous opportunity they had that they took advantage of. And because they had the right answer for the and if not moment, God was glorified through them. He said, they've got the real God. And if anybody says anything against them, then you'll deal with me. That's what God can do. So it's not a tragedy if you have to face one of those trials. It might not be easy. It probably won't be. But it, it's not the worst thing that can happen. You see, the worst thing that could have happened is that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego just faded into the background or done what everybody else was doing around them. Nobody would have said anything. I mean, they were foreigners in a foreign land. That would have been the real tragedy. And it would be a real tragedy in your life if it's in your moment of, and if not, you would decide to take the easy road. The road of less conflict, the road of less troubles. But you would miss out on the opportunity to know God and what he is capable of doing. So when you face your and if not moment, follow the example of these three men who had made up their mind that it was going to be God's way or no way. And let's just see what God can do with you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this opportunity. Lord, we thank you for this time in your word and for this tremendous example. Lord, help us to decide here and now what path we're going to take and trust that you can take us safely where we need to be. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, that's why you come to Wednesday night Bible study. Does your paper look like my paper? <clears throat>
trials, even for the most dedicated Christian. I would say the Wednesday night crowd is a pretty dedicated Christian crowd. Accused for doing the right thing. Wow. Sometimes you just assume doing the right thing, you should be blessed. No God can help you. Satan loves to tell us that. But they knew their God. I love that sentence. Because Satan tries to tell me things all the time that aren't true about my God. That's why you need this book. But if not, okay, I believe you, God. Here's what I want. But if you're going to do it differently, that's okay. What a statement. Brother Mike said, what are you going to do if God does it differently than you want him to? And then you followed that by saying, are you going to stay faithful? Are you going to obey? Are you going to believe? Are you going to quit? Are you going to get angry? Are you going to get bitter? What are you going to do when God does it differently? And by the way, most of the time God does it differently than what we think. He said they would have never known the peace of God, the power of God, had it not been for the fire. If you forget the end of that story and you walk yourself through all of that, my goodness, we know the end of it, so we're comfortable. We need to apply the end of that in our life. And then two things. Going through the trial is not the worst thing in your life. Sure feels like the worst thing in my life. And God will never leave you. And he will never forsake you. That's our God. Amen. So now what do you do with something like this? You take it home. You take it in your heart. You think about it. You meditate it. You apply it. And you stand on it. It don't mean you, you're going to survive it. He could let him die. He's sovereign God. Scary. But they were willing just to put their life in the hand of the Lord. You do what's best. Because he's the only one that knows what's best. You fed our souls tonight. You fed my soul tonight. I appreciate that greatly. Heavenly Father, help us. Help us to apply what we've heard tonight. My mind was going in my own life, and then it was filtering through the people that I pastor, the people that are here tonight. And I was thinking, please listen. I kept telling myself, listen, Tom, listen, Tom, apply. Help us all to do that. And may we... Have hearts to obey and surrender and stay faithful. We know our God. And you're great and powerful. Thank you for the man of God that you sent to teach us tonight. All the way from Argentina. You put your word in his heart. And he taught us well tonight. Bless him and Sandy. Bless them with traveling mercies on their furlough. Bless the work in Argentina. Bless them as they go down there and reach people with the gospel and disciple and train. If those people are getting this preaching, then they're strong believers down there. And you protect that ministry. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand if you would. Our song to go home, Brother Rod. He Take the name you. of Jesus with you. I, I, great. I asked Brother Mike and Stan if they'd go to the lobby. Make sure you shake their hand. Tell them what a blessing it was. See you back on the Lord's Day for Palm Sunday. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. 
It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then wherever you go. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Good night and God bless you all. You're now dismissed.